If Marvel solicitations are any indication to go by, the publisher is going to have an insanely busy month. Marvel finally dropped the second half of their solicitations, cataloging nearly all of their comics being shipped in March. And we've got the latest on all of the big titles ending or debuting over in the month of March. We have some huge comics that'll guide us everywhere from Doctor Strange uh, Sanctum Sanctorum to the latest happenings uh, with Hellcat. My name is Oracle Braddock, and today, let's go ahead and jump into all the comics shipping in March, but I specifically want to pinpoint five of my personal, um, you know, most anticipated titles for the month. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to go ahead and encourage you to su consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button if you enjoy our content. And without further ado, let's go ahead and kick our list off with the number five pick. This is Doctor Strange number one over from Marvel. And this one is really interesting because it's actually the return of Stephen Strange to the Marvel Universe. Marvel has been publishing a book called Strange, which has seen Stephen's wife, Clea, take up the mantle of the Sorcerer Supreme while Stephen was not able to serve in the role. But finally, Doctor Strange is back, and Marvel's brand new solicitations covered the return of one of their premier superheroes. So this issue is written by Jed McKay. We have art from Pascal Ferry and a cover from Alex Ross. I want to read off this solicitation just to give you a little bit of context behind the issue itself. Change your reality. Stephen Strange is back. Reunited with Clea and Wong, it's back to business as usual for the Sorcerer Supreme. Have your children fallen into a deep, nightmarish slumber? Are demonic refugees invading your home? Is your husband possessed by a satanic entity? Then call Doctor Strange. Join Jed McKay and Pasquale Ferry as they begin a new chapter in the life of the Master of the Mystic Arts. Before we step away from this concept, I do just want to step in here and say that I'm a little bit disappointed in Marvel's editorial for not continuing with Clea Strange's adventures as the Sorcerer Supreme. I was really enjoying seeing her in that role, and I don't think Marvel fully explored what Clea was capable of uh, before letting Steven back into the mantle. Thankfully, we have writer Jed McKay on this title, so I'm hoping that even though we're switching characters and I'm not super excited about it, I think we're still going to get some great writing if the past couple issues of Strange from Jed McKay are any indication. So I was super disappointed that Marvel's latest Iron Man run, uh, written by Christopher Cantwell with art from people like Kafu and Angel and Zueta just wrapped up. But I was also equally glad that Marvel announced a brand new kind of Hellcat title. Uh, this one is also written by the, the Iron Man writer Christopher Cantwell. We have art from Alex Linz in this cover here from Pere Perez. And again, I want to read a little bit more context behind the issue in Marvel solicitation text. Leaping from the pages of Christopher Cantwell's Iron Man run, Hellcat is back. Patsy is back on the West Coast, living in a demon house haunted by the ghost of her mother. When someone close to Patsy's inner circle is murdered, Hellcat becomes the prime suspect. Now, Patsy must prove her innocence and evade both the police and the supernatural sleepwalkers. To add to the perils she faces, her demonic ex, Damon Hellstrom, shows up and that's never a good thing. A supernatural superhero murder mystery. Hellcat is Patsy Walker is a great character because of her origins in the Marvel Universe. She was originally a Marvel romance character and Marvel decided to integrate her into their superhero line, dubbing her as the superheroic Hellcat. This is a really fantastic character. I love Christopher Cantwell's work with Patsy on the main Iron Man title and I'm glad that um, you know, we're getting basically an expanded outlet for Cantwell to tell some new stories with Hellcat. Next up, I want to go ahead and talk about our number three pick. This one is Hollow's Eve number one, written by Erica Schultz with art and cover from Michael Dowling. Spinning out of Amazing Spider-Man, Hollow's Eve gets her own series. Janine Godby's world has been blown up several times in her life, but this time she has a bag of super-powered masks and a chip on her shoulder. So I am super pumped for this Hollow's Eve title because I think 
that this is a character who has so much potential over at Marvel. I loved how the publisher was able to kind of use the pages of Amazing Spider-Man to kind of set this character up. I'm really interested how this character is being implemented into uh, Marvel's Dark Web crossover that's currently going on in the Spider-Man and X-Men titles. But I was super surprised when, you know, said character ended up turning into a Hollow's Eve and just didn't expect that we would get, um, you know, some of those uh, brand new kind of aspects of continuity melding into Marvel. Frankly, I'm happy that Marvel is really exploring Ben Riley's character as Chasm, and I think this Hollow's Eve uh, miniseries is going to be a really strong extension to figure out just where Marvel's planning to go with this character. Also, I hope that we get some Hollow's Eve following Dark Web, because I just think that this concept in and of itself has so much potential. Let's go ahead and talk about our next book on the list. This is I Am Iron Man, number one, written by Marewa Ayodele with art and cover from Doton Akande. Hopefully I got that pronunciation right. Let's read the solicitation. Beneath the red and gold armor is a hopeless romantic, a genius inventor, a war hero, a billionaire, an avenger, a person, Tony Stark. Dynamic duo Marewa Ayadole and Doten Akande unite again to journey through the rich history of Iron Man, telling stories never seen before set in the iconic eras of all Shellhead. No better way to celebrate Iron Man's 60th anniversary than getting to watch him be the Earth's mightiest hero who we love so much. Kaiju battles under the sea, alien invasions in the desert, a rescue mission in outer space, all that and more are to be expected in this new series. Ideal for readers new to Iron Man and long-standing fans of the Golden Avenger. I think this Iron Man title has a lot of potential. I really appreciate how it's going back to kind of aspects of Tony Stark's past and fleshing them out a little bit more. I hope this series is able to kind of pull on some interesting aspects of Tony's characterization and it would even be cool if we saw some of this kind of um, you know follow into the main Iron Man title. Our next book is Rogue and Gambit number one and this issue was written by Stephanie Phillips with art from Carlos Gomez and we have a cover from Steve Morris. Krakoa is on a precipice. Destiny alone can see what's coming but the precog cannot act. For that she'll need her adoptive daughter Rogue. Husbands need not apply. But with mutant duty stealing Rogue away from so much these days, Gambit is determined to make the most of the mission and put some Cajun spice back into their increasingly complicated love affair. He just has to make it out of the bar first. Powerhouse writer Stephanie Phillips and joins fan favorite artist Carlos Gomez for a thrill ride that'll lay bare some of Krakoa's biggest secrets. So in terms of this story, I think the thing that has me the most excited is just what Destiny's role is going to be in this story. I didn't know that the essentially premise of this miniseries is that uh, Destiny essentially sees something kind of coming because she is a, a precog mutant that is able to see the future. And she's employing her adoptive daughter Rogue to help her out. And of course, Gambit just ends up uh, meeting along the way here. So the thing that I'm really appreciating about this miniseries is it's not just kind of an outlet, just, just a random characterization for Rogue and Gambit. But instead, it looks like this is going to tie into some of the greater plot threads of Krakoa. So we already looked through five comics, but I want to go ahead and give special attention to a title that I didn't know was ending this month and a book that I think has not gotten enough praise. And that is John Ridley and uh, German Peralta's Black Panther run. So in Marvel's solicitation text for this issue, Black Panther number 15, uh, Marvel dubs this as the epic finale of writer John Ridley's game-changing run. This issue is drawn by German Peralta with, with a cover from Alex Ross that we're looking at right now. Finally, all things must come to a head. Jai, T'Challa's best friend and sleeper agent whose assassination served as the catalyst for all of T'Challa's recent troubles is alive. Not only is he alive, but he seeks to seize control of the entire world, all in the name of Wakanda. Still injured, Black Panther rushes forward to take down the man who was once his closest comrade. 
but T'Challa knows he must still pay his pound of flesh for his role in bringing so much strife to fruition. So this solicitation text really caught me off guard, but it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about uh, John Ridley's Black Panther run from sort of like a zoomed out macro lens, because this series really um, was started as a sort of espionage title focusing in on some of the mistakes that T'Challa's made in his career as the Black Panther in seeing kind of the espionage aspects with Jai kind of return to basically make a, a, a really powerful conclusion to the end of this series. Looks like it's going to perfectly encapsulate all those themes that John Ridley was kind of using throughout his run on the title. I'm really happy that Marvel is choosing an arc like this to end the series on, but I'm also disappointed because I feel like John Ridley could have gotten a lot more accomplished uh, with Black Panther and the work that he has accomplished on the title has been interesting, in in incredible, and just so engaging to watch. So that's it for the House of Ideas over in March. As you can tell, we have a huge amount of titles over at the publisher. We didn't even cover everything Marvel has to offer for this month. There's still plenty of crossovers like Sins of Sinister ravaging the Marvel Universe as well as several other titles. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching the video. And I want to know if there's any books that we missed that you're reading on uh, this Marvel solicitations for March. And we'll be back very soon with more excellent comic book content. Thank you so much and we'll see you very soon. Bye.